The internet age has given rise to a lot of silly, unfounded rumors about everything from Walt Disney having his head frozen to Tommy Hilfiger proclaiming on a television that he didn't want minorities wearing his clothes. Even Santa has fallen victim to this scam, despite the fact that he's technically a non-profit. Some have claimed that Coca-Cola's iconic portrait of Santa has shaped the way we describe him to children. In reality, more of an evolutionary figure whose look has been shaped by writers, artists, and even historians. Images of the familiar bearded fat man in a red suit appeared in magazines, posters, and ads long before Coke's jolly portrayal of Saint Nick. Every year, post offices across America, Canada, and other parts of the world are flooded with letters from kids addressed to Santa Claus. The Canadian post office received so many that some postal workers started answering the letters. As the demand increased, the postal service set up a zip code for Santa as part of the annual Santa Letter Writing Program Literacy Initiative. The zip code is H-O-H-O-H-O, -O -O, of course. The reindeer that takes Santa on his trip also underwent some rebranding throughout history. In the original draft of A Visit from St. Nicholas, Donner and Blitzen went by the far clunkier names of Dunder and Blixen. The names, much like Santa, were taken from the Dutch O for the words that mean thunder and lightning. Over time, editors tinkered with the reindeer names we are familiar with today. After all, it's pretty hard to think of Rudolph as the outcast reindeer when he's on a team with a guy named Dunder. It's hard to go more than 5 minutes without hearing the familiar tune of Jingle Bells running through your head during the month of December. The truth is that you should have been hearing it in November. According to the Mental Floss magazine, composer James Lord Pierpont wrote the song in the 1850s to play for his Boston Sunday School class during Thanksgiving. It was a way to commemorate the famed Medford Slay Races. Kids and adults loved the song and eventually changed the lyrics to fit Christmas. Of course, if you knew what the name mistletoe actually meant, you'd be less inclined to stand under it. The crazy parasitic plant has a symbiotic relationship with a bird called the mistle thrush. The bird eats the berries, digests the seeds, and then leaves droppings which eventually grow into a new mistletoe plant, which explains why the Germanic word for mistletoe literally means dung on a twig. Thanks for watching Brainy Fives. For more awesome Christmas themed videos, don't forget to subscribe, comment below, and give this video a thumbs up. If you like this video or learned anything new, feel free to do any of the things that I just mentioned. And I just want to thank all you guys once again for subscribing, commenting, and liking in all my previous videos and getting me to this point on this channel. So once again, keep on looking out for these Christmas related videos and I will see you in the next video.